very welcome to this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast. The last time we recorded a podcast, we were looking forward to two uh, All Ireland semi finals, and the dream was to have two teams in an All Ireland final. It wasn't to be for our seniors losing to Waterford by a pint, but we do have our juniors preparing now for an All Ireland final on Sunday, the 6th of August, playing Clare in the Glen Templex All Ireland junior final. So, today's podcast, we are going to be previewing that game and chatting to different people involved, players and management involved with the setup. And I'm delighted to be joined firstly by uh, chairperson of Aero Ganacarty, uh, Siobhan O'Neill. Siobhan, um, I mentioned there you're chairperson of Aero Ganacarty, uh, your former Tipperary player as well. Uh, first of all, I suppose great excitement in the county this week, looking forward to uh, the All Ireland final, and it's great to have a team back in, in Crow Park for the first time since 2006. Yeah, sure. Look, it, it's great excitement, as you said, in the county, and it's filtering back down to, to all the clubs in our own club. Eroga and Akarty, um, we're very proud we had to have four girls on the panel, um, to have vice captain and Jean, I suppose, is, is really standing out at the moment with, with a couple of player of the matches awards and things. And it's just even for all the underage players in the county and, and in our own club, it just gives them something to look up to and aspire to. And it, it just it just creates a buzz with Camogie and Tipperary at the moment. So it's huge. Yeah. And I suppose uh, when David Sullivan got the job early in the year, I know one of the players straight away he went after was, was Sienna Walsh. She, she hadn't been involved maybe for the previous year or so. Um, like she brings great leadership to the setup. And I suppose early in the year, she was made giant captain along with Claire Stakelam. Uh, so I'm sure you see those leadership qualities at club level as well. Yeah, sure. Look, I, I have hurled and known Sienna for, for years and, and rallied with her. She's a super girl. Um, she just drives, drives everything, drives the standard. Like, and we're really looking forward to to getting her back at club training along with the other girls because she just her leadership qualities. Like all the younger girls, we're a very young team in in Aroga and Akarty, and we all just look up to her. Um, she just, as I said, drives the standards. She brings so much leadership qualities. If you're under pressure at all, you know she's there. She's she's behind you the whole time. And I'm delighted that she was given the opportunity to be giant captain. And it's great that she went back in with Tip because she was off there for for a couple of years. Like and. She's, she just relishes it and she's really relishing the opportunity now to, to, to play in Crow Park and please God to get up the steps of the, the Hogan stand to be massive for her. And massive for the whole club, of course, as well. I mean, you mentioned Jean Kelly there. She's really, I suppose, lit the championship on fire. You know, she's banging in the goals there, left, right and centre. I suppose she's the key player for Tip in the forwards and I'm sure it's someone that Claire will be keeping a close eye on in yeah, Crow Park. Yeah, sure. Look, the talk all the week is, is that Jean is going to be well marked against Claire, but... Jean will only relish that opportunity as uh, as well, and and you know she has she's performed unreal in the, in the last couple of games, and can be clearly seen with all her her woman of the matches, uh, awards like um. But Jean, she's just such a hard player to mark. Like she'd be playing corner forward, but she'd be gone out wing. She'd be gone out half forward. She's just mad to get on the ball. Um, she's a real good girl when she gets the ball to have a look up if there's a pass on or else put the head down and take on the player. She just she just has speed, Camogie, and like even since she's gone in with the tip set up, her hurling has come on some some amount, and she's just she's just playing super. She's the top of her game at the moment, and I can't wait to see her up in Crow Park with with the space that'll be there for her. Yeah, you'd imagine Crow Park would be made for her, and she's the experience of playing there as well with the tip seniors, which will definitely stand to her. Um, just great Shlo Dwyer then, another another representative from the club. I know she picked up a serious hand injury early in the year. She missed out in the Munster final. They thought she was gone for the year, but she's back and she came on a sub there against Ross Common and really chomping at the bit again to get back yeah. into the team. Yeah, I think we, we were all surprised that she was back so quick because when when she went for the for her check up and things it wasn't looking good, but it just it just shows how driven and determined she is to get back on that team and it was great to see her come on uh, as a sub the last day and from what I hear she's really going to be pushing for for a starting position now come come the All-Ireland final on Sunday in Crow Park um, re- yeah like like again the training and being in with the county set up has really stood to Rachel as well and she's in peak fitness like she's she's really strong she's like while she was injured and coming back from injury she had trained with us in, in the club for a couple of sessions and she was streets ahead of all of us just fitness and hurling so I'd be really hopeful that, that Rachel will if she doesn't start that and I know she will have a really important um, role to play in the All-Ireland final and Aoife Butler there mentioned there for Aoife I suppose she's pushing Aoife O'Brien hard all year they've kind of been swapping and changing the, the keepers now so I suppose Aoife 
wearing the number 16 jersey the last couple of games a really good keeper as well to have in the squad yeah sure Aoife is a super girl she's, she was on the senior panel there for the last couple of years back on the junior panel now again this year and she 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 was in goals for the Munster final um, against Limerick and she, she's a super game so I'm sure I don't know what's going on in training but I'm sure they're both pushing each other hard uh, for that number one uh, position uh, come the All-Ireland All final day but um, yeah no Aoife is a super asset super super goalie and as I said we're really looking forward to getting them all back to the club um, once once they have the All-Ireland final one and I, I don't know what you know I know you've seen some of the games this year I think though there's probably more in this team and you know do you think Crow Park will suit them? Look, it's, it's going to be, I was even just talking to Sienna there earlier on and just saying, are you getting a chance to run out in Crow Park or anything and before the big day and they're not. So like that, it's going to be a massive experience uh, for them. Like, and do you know, to get out on the pitch and the stadium and the noise and the crowds, like it's, it's going to be daunting. So they're going to have to be well prepared for that. And I'm sure management will have them geared up and, and prepared for that. But look... They're probably are gearing up and, you know, they're playing better and better in, in all their games. And from what I hear, Clare are going to be very good, strong opposition. But look, it's, it's all to play for. It's 60 minutes up in up in Crow Park. Um, I'm sure the, the management team will have the girls well prepared. And look, it's a massive opportunity and you only get one shot at these things. So they'll give it everything they have on the day and hopefully they'll have enough to get over the line. And you're a chairperson of your club. How important is it for clubs to get behind the girls and, you know, to get buses going to Crow Park? Sure, it's super, yeah. And I, I do you know what? From talking to other clubs during the week, I think most clubs are um, are kind of organising buses and getting the, if they have players on the team, getting them into the underage, get the girls talking, talking to them. And even for the underage to get to know the girls uh, in the club and, to put out flags and signage and things and really just drive it on like because it's it's massive for the girls in the club it's massive for the county and it's just for Camogie overall in Tipperary it's huge so yeah hopefully all clubs will will get out in great numbers and support the girls and to get up to Crow Park on, on Sunday. Thanks very much Siobhan. Uh, during the week I popped down to the open training session with the Tip Juniors and the supporters and I caught up with uh, Silver Mines corner back here Ryan uh, Selector Bridge of Burke and uh, parents of two of the players, uh, Liam Sheedy and Brian Horgan. Now I'm joined by Kira Ryan. Kira, we're only two weeks out from an All Ireland final. What's, what does that feel like to be knowing you're heading to Crow Park? I'm sure it's unbelievable. Like it's something you've dreamed about since you're a child. Um, going to matches like one of my first memories is going up to see Tip win in 2004, and seeing Joanne Ryan and all them playing on the field was unbelievable. So I suppose just uh, 20 years in the making to try and get there as well. So it's class. And like I'm sure from the start of the year you talked about uh, getting to winning an All-Ireland or getting to an All-Ireland final but it really has been like one game at a time and a step on the, on the ladder each time. Yeah, so I suppose back in November when we first started on the journey, like obviously Crow Park is where everyone wants to be and that's the aim, but you have to get there and I suppose I'd have been involved in teams in the past where we would have fallen short at different stages along, so it was just about getting back to that stage and getting as far as semi-final. Like we came through the league, the league was kind of was tough enough for us, like we were playing against intermediate teams, probably maybe didn't hit as much form as we wanted in the Monster Championship, but still managed just to get through and get the wins and stay going from there then and sure, look, now we're here, there we are in this final so you just don't know it's one more step to go hopefully and just thinking about this group uh, what's what's so special about this group you, you, see, you seem to have a really good bond amongst you all and you know great camaraderie and what's what is it that makes this group so special I suppose there's such a mix of people in it like there's girls that are fresh out of minor and there's girls that are on the road a long time and there's some of us would have shouldered in the trenches a good bit together but I suppose it's just uh, in fairness to the lads they've set up a group there and like they, they're really focused on while training is tough and like we obviously we come, to, come here to train and train hard but like there's still room for crack and enjoyment and I suppose when you're heading off to the likes of Cavan and places like that on a bus there's plenty of room for getting to know each other. Brilliant stuff, Kieran. Best of luck. Okay, and joined now by selector Bridget Burke. Bridget, um, I suppose you're only a week and a half away to an All Ireland final. It's where you want to be all year. It must be great excitement. Oh, absolutely, Jordan. Um, it's unreal, absolutely unreal, and they deserve to be there too, like because they've worked really hard all year. And um, we said at the outset our aim was to make Crow Park on the sixth of August, and we're on target. Thank God. <laughs> and like I know you lost the first two games in the league but you're unbeaten since uh, two games in the league Munster Championship all Ireland Championship group games uh, semi-final win so you're on a great roll Absolutely yeah. like we had, we had a bad day against Cork on our very first day out but we kind of 
push that aside because you know um, it's ours our first proper um, match together you know um, that was the intermediate league as well so um, you know we we put that behind us very quickly and moved on and um, you know we won enough uh, in the league to stay up intermediate for the league so hopefully we'll be intermediate for the championship next year <laughs> you know but it, you know all the matches in fairness you know we're since then we're unbeaten you know and um we've had some very good challenge matches against some you know some quality intermediate sides and uh, we've you know we have come out on top so um the quality in the in the side is there you know so um they're where they deserve to be you know they've earned it you know yeah, and I suppose there's a feel, I suppose, from watching you and following you, you know, we've seen glimpses of how good you can play and, you know, certainly uh, in passages there, you know, you really shun and, and, and were very strong against Roscommon, but there's still the feeling maybe that there's more in this group and maybe the best will be for, saved for last in Crow Park. Well, hopefully, you know, like every day somebody else shines, you know, there's, there's, they're popping up all over the place. The hardest job we have is actually to pick the starting 15 because it's literally hair spreads between players. They're all more or less at the same standard. So, like, you're looking at who we're playing to decide on who who starts and who's most suitable against different teams. And, um, you know, like, they all work really hard and it's 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 great. You know, it's a brilliant position to be in, you know, that... Um, like some days, you know, some forwards shine, other days, other forwards shine. The backs, in fairness, have been consistent the whole way through. Like they're very fit, you know, which is standing to them big time when you're you're at the end, last 10 minutes of a game when you want, you need legs. And um, we've used the panel of 20 all the time. We've very, very the subs every time coming in. So um, I think myself, like there's, there's great opportunity there going forward with this team. I think that they're, you know, they're well up for Sunday week. And just, um, you know, you've had great support all year, you know, travelling all around the country with you, but I know, you know, you really want big support in Croke Park. I know, I'm sure you'd love to see all the clubs bring buses to the matches, all the families, all the supporters, all the Tipperary GA and Camogie supporters to get to Crow Park on, on Sunday the 6th of August. Oh yeah, I hope everybody comes out and turns out because like, it's not every day you have a tip team in Crow Park and it's a fantastic occasion and All Ireland, All Ireland Sunday is a fantastic day in Crow Park. I've often gone up and tipped not there, you know, and it's a great day out and I, like, I'd encourage um, clubs to bring all their young girls like, and see like where hard work gets you, you know, and like that there's, there's a lot of ambition in a lot of younger players there, you know, particularly the, 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 the girls now gone kind of from under 14 up, like I think it would be a tremendous day out for them, and let's see like what hard work, where you get, you know this is where you end up when, when things go well and, and, you know, you've worked hard and the talent is there. And the talent is there in the county. It's fantastic. You know, you see it in the club, around the club championships there where there's, um, you know, it, every match is contested. You know, how many draws had we last year? You know, so it's, you know, the standard is tremendous. You know, so I hope we get the support. We've had great support so far in fairness and we've, you know, we've had to travel to Cavan, Ashburn, and even our challenge matches. Like we've we've travelled around a good bit, and we've had great support. Like um, you know, the families of the girls are brilliant, and the clubs have been great to support. So hopefully, it'll continue. You know, Bridget, thanks very much, and best of luck on Sunday week. Thanks very much, Geraldine. So I'm joined now by Liam Sheedy and Brian Horgan. I suppose two men that know hurling inside out and camogie at this stage, and have t daughters preparing for an All Ireland final. Liam, we'll go to you first. So. I suppose it must be great excitement in your house. Ah, yeah, it's fantastic. You know, the, the girls have trained really hard all year. Uh, David and lads come in there this year, and you know they've worked they've worked very very hard. And you know they had a great start in the group. It was great for them to win the Munster the Munster title early on this year. I think that gave them all a lift. So, look to be heading out in Crow Park is a fantastic honour, and it's great for all the clubs involved. And it's great to see the support here that they're getting this evening. So, uh, you know, as I said, they've trained hard, and they'll be they'll meet a formidable challenge in in Clare. But you know, Ross Common were very tough opposition as well last Saturday, and they they dug it out and they really played well, and they they just have a nice style of play and they're very very difficult to take on so uh, hopefully they can bring the spirit that they have in the group uh, to Crow Park in two weeks time and hopefully we get a chance to maybe win a bit, a bit more silverware because uh, they have worked really hard but they will meet formidable opponents in, in Clare. 
And I suppose playing in Crow Park is different to any other pitch. You know, I suppose are there any pointers you would say for preparing to play in Crow Park and I learn final day? Yeah, you know, it's, it, that's the thing. You just want to be yourself up there. I think that's really important for the girls. You know, we used to always talk about trying to bring it from Morris Park up to Crow Park. And, you know, if you can bring your best version of yourself, these girls have they've all the work done. So, you know, that's what you got to remind yourself. And I suppose weeks like this, you know, when you're involved with teams, you have to enjoy the build-up too, you know, and embrace going into Crow Park and getting into that special stadium. I mean, it's, it's a field of dreams. Uh, so, you know, once they go up and, and play the way they're able to play, there'll be no fear of them up in Crow Park. And it's it's a great occasion. You know, All-Ireland Final, Camogie Day, three finals on, and tip kicking off the, with, the, with the first match. So, uh, as I said, they're there on merit, and we're looking forward to a great a great game. But hopefully, as I said, they can enjoy the build-up and most of all enjoy the game and, and give, it, give it everything. And I think we'll all be proud at that stage. Thanks, Liam. And Brian, I suppose, Cloda, you know, you've watched her play Camogie all her life with Boerlan and, and, and Tipperary. You know, you must be proud to, to think that she's going to walk out in Crow Park on Sunday week. Yeah, Jordan, you know, we're very proud of her, obviously. We've been, we're involved with the Boerlan duality club and, you know, she's, she's played there since she was six years of age and she was actually captain of juniors last year and I think she's enjoying it a bit better this year, you know, it's was less pressure and, uh, like, they have a really good balanced team and, you know, they're getting some great performances. And I actually watched the game here last year against Clare. They were beaten by a point. So like that's going to be a huge challenge now on Sunday week. Uh, but like, nights like tonight, as Liam said, yeah, these are the nights they enjoy. They have to enjoy these kind of nights, you know. And they, the guys are ready to go train afterwards. Uh, but yeah, Claude is really enjoying this year. Uh, you know, she's a lot of good friends there from Cash as well. to come together in the car. And uh, yeah, she's really, really buzzing for now. And we've seen Claude play maybe midfield, half forward, and she's kind of moved into full forward in the last couple of games. Which, which Where do you think is her best position? Yeah, she plays midfield with the club, and I suppose she went wing forward last year, with, and she started wing forward this year, she's gone in corner full. I suppose, looking at the game last Saturday, she, she got onto a good bit of ball, she didn't score, but she lays off with a lot of ball, and she gets into good position to receive ball and things like that. But I think maybe the outside line, the, the half forward line would be her best position, and she'd often say that to me. But, like, listen, you know, she, she's delighted to be on the team at the moment and uh, she's given it her all. You know, she wouldn't be, I suppose, uh, uh, the main score and threat on it. That, but, she, you know, she has loads of energy, that's one thing about her, and she will play her part. So that's it for this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast. Really hope you enjoyed it. It was brilliant chatting to different people ahead of the all Ireland Junior Final this Sunday at 12.50 in Crow Park, Tipperary versus Clare. Do not miss it. You do not want to miss this game. It's going to be a cracker. Uh, fingers crossed we can do it. We can go all the way and bring an all Ireland title back to Tipperary. Best luck to all the players and management and we hope we see you all there in Crow Park on Sunday.